Russia will not stand by while Ukraine bleeds to death. After two weeks of the Ukrainian offensive, all eyes have turned to the battlefields and, more importantly, Russia's future options. NATO will be holding a summit in Vilnius in a little over three weeks, and the West will also have options to consider. We are at a crossroads now. NATO anticipated that Ukrainian forces would have broken through strategic Russian defenses by now. The Russian artillery, missiles, and the feared multi-role attack helicopters known as Alligator are making it difficult, if not impossible, for them to get within striking distance of the sprawling layered fortifications. The best roadmap is Russian President Vladimir Putin's over three-hour press conference with war correspondents in the Kremlin on Tuesday. Ukraine's offensive lasted only a week, but in that time, 25-30% of the supplied equipment, from NATO, has been destroyed, Putin said. Putin emphasized three main points. First, Ukraine is part of the effort to destabilize Russia, making the stated goals of the special military operations fundamental for us. A definition, please. This means that the Russian military campaign will continue until its stated goals of demilitarizing Ukraine and toppling the current neo-Nazi regime in Kiev have been achieved. Safety and prosperity for the Russian people are also still top priorities. Putin has stated that Russia will achieve these goals, gradually, methodically. Putin also warned, the Ukrainian defense industry will soon cease to exist altogether. To what end do they work? Everything from ammunition and equipment to weapons and ammunition is delivered. Like that, you have no chance of surviving for very long. As a result, the question of demilitarization becomes acutely tangible. Third, the Kremlin's current preference is to continue grinding down the Ukrainian military while providing selective responses whenever red lines are crossed, such as when Russian strikes were made on Ukraine's energy system or when the headquarters of the Ukrainian military intelligence were destroyed. Ukraine spy chief Kirillo Budanov, the media darling of the West, was allegedly seriously injured in the attack on Kiev, according to Russian claims. Putin has stated that, everything will depend on the potential that is left at the end of this so-called counter-offensive. This is the main issue. Putin said that after such, catastrophic losses, the leadership in Kiev must consider logically, what to do next. Continuing, he said, we will wait to see what the situation is like and take further steps based on this understanding. The specifics of our departure strategy will be determined by the circumstances. That includes any and all NATO hardware. Putin sneered at Western boasts that they could catch up to Russia in the defense industry. He encouraged them to start making whatever it was they had promised to make when they said they would. During a recession, normalcy is temporarily suspended. They lack the firmness that characterizes the Russian people. The problem stems from the fact that these countries lack fervor and are on the decline. We have it, though. We will stand up for what we want, and we will get it. Kiev should pull back from the offensive in light of these sobering facts. But unfortunately, that won't be the case. Kiev is feeling intense pressure from the United States capital to announce a major victory. However, Ukraine does not have an endless supply of reserves. Ukrainian reserve forces numbering between 35,000 and 40,000 are outnumbered and outgunned by their Russian counterparts, who number in the hundreds of thousands and have air superiority. It's not out of the question that the Russian forces won't join the offensive at some point. However, U.S. Ambassador to Belgium Julian Smith has stated that the U.S. and its NATO allies are looking at an array of options to signal that Ukraine is advancing in its relationship with the alliance. Ukrainian President Zelensky's official advisor, former NATO chief Andres Rasmussen, has threatened to send troops to Ukraine if member states, including the United States, fail to provide concrete security guarantees to Kiev at the Vilnius summit. Rasmussen made the claim that Poles would seriously consider going in and assembling a coalition of the willing if Ukraine doesn't get anything in Vilnius. Don't discount how the Poles feel. They believe Western Europe ignored their concerns for far too long. Recent meetings of state and government leaders in the Weimar Triangle, format, France, Poland, and Germany, on June 12 in Paris have seen a rise in rhetoric, 
with participants agreeing that Ukraine should be provided with security guarantees. When asked about the necessity of such a program, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said, It is evident that we need something like this, and we need it in a very concrete form. President Emmanuel Macron of France has also urged a swift agreement on tangible and credible security guarantees. Indeed, it's all empty talk. Poland, putting boots on the ground, is such an obviously ridiculous idea. In a war with Russia, the Polish armed forces would be destroyed. However, these antics only serve to highlight how worried people are about the prospect of a NATO defeat in Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg spoke up to bring some sobering reality to the table, stressing the importance of Ukraine's continued existence as a nation state in the here and now. When asked about when Ukraine might be admitted as a NATO member, Stoltenberg said, I believe it is not possible to give precise dates when we are in the midst of a war. Ukraine's survival as an independent nation state must now be prioritized above all else. Because only a sovereign, independent, and democratic Ukraine can become a member of NATO, and unless Ukraine wins, there is no membership to discuss. Stoltenberg followed Washington's lead. In fact, he made those remarks during an interview with PBS while in Washington, D.C. Russia is keeping its focus on the battlefield at all times. Russia is forcing a strategic defeat on the West that will go down in history. A military solution could mean the end of Ukraine as a nation and the expulsion of NATO, leaving the West with only one option, to negotiate with Russia on its terms. There is no doubt that Russian offensive plans have been developed. Moscow elites are discussing establishing new realities, such as a demilitarized zone along the Polish border. To achieve this goal, Russian forces must cross the Dnieper and free not only Kiev but also the historically Russian cities of Kharkiv and Odessa. Russia has no desire to take control of the hostile territory that Stalin annexed from western Ukraine. However, Poland isn't the only neighboring country in western Ukraine with historical land partition issues. Poles still remember the killings committed by Ukrainian nationalists who collaborated with the Nazis making the unresolved nationality question a potential time bomb. More than a hundred thousand Poles, including women and very young children, are believed to have been killed by their Ukrainian neighbors during a nationalist drive in what was formerly Polish territory but is now predominantly Ukrainian territory in southeastern Poland. What exactly happens to Ukraine after a devastating military defeat is anyone's guess, to put it mildly. The Kremlin will use its discretionary powers as necessary. Moscow appears to have decided that a military solution is their only viable option. It will not stand for Ukraine to continue to be an open sore infected by microorganisms from the Atlantic galaxy. The wound must be cauterized, despite the risks involved.